Hello, I'm Bruce Shanny, and today in Humane Science, I want to go back and look at the Seabrook Siren Disc. Now, in the previous video, we took a look at its operation. In this video, I want to take a look at its construction. Now, let's get started. Now, here's the setup for it. Our motor, of course, is going to get the disc on it. This build starts with a wooden base, a larger support for the motor, and two smaller supports for the speed control. The wiring for this piece consists of a battery holder, motor, two alligator clips, the wire itself, and a pencil. There are a couple of different ways to mount the motor. One possible way is just to use hot glue and glue it in place. It can also be clamped into place in the wood support. The lead in the pencil is actually a mixture of graphite and clay. It actually makes a pretty good variable resistor, so we're going to use that as a speed control. Now to expose that graphite, I'll simply sand the wood down with this rotary tool. When it's finished, the pencil is simply glued onto the two supports. Now to vary the speed, I simply move the alligator clip along the length of the pencil and as it gets closer to the other one, the motor speeds up. Now this piece could be made a lot simpler by gluing a motor directly onto a battery. This version has the motor and the battery holder glued to a piece of wood acting as a handle. To start it, the alligator clips are simply attached to the battery holder. Now that we have the bases built, the next step is the disc itself. Uh, we could make them out of CDs, but I really like making them out of these foam plates. We are going to need a pattern. You may be able to find one of these online, or I'll show you how to figure out one for yourself. A search online for Seebeck Siren Disc may bring up some examples. Here's a good one to try. In my previous video, I showed other patterns to explore. To start, I enlarged this pattern so that it fits conveniently into this foam plate. I'll find its center. And then I'm simply going to go through and mark where each hole should be using a Sharpie. The ink's going to bleed through the paper and mark the plate underneath it. My first method of cutting the holes out is going to use this pencil. I'm simply going to take the eraser out. Next, I'll use that metal band to cut through the foam. I'll start by placing the pencil over one of the holes, pressing down firmly. I'll turn the plate underneath it until it cuts through the foam. And there's the first hole. Now it's simply a matter of continuing with that same method over each one of the marks until all the holes are cut out. With the holes all cut out, the next step is to remove the rest of the plate that's not needed. For that, I'll either use a circle cutter or some scissors. Attaching the disc to the motor can be done with either small car wheels or a block of wood with a hole drilled in it. A little bit of hot glue and a sharp point to line up the holes. It is possible to drill the holes out, but you have to be careful because the bit can tear that foam easily. Now I have marked and cut another disc out of a foam plate. Uh, this time I'm going to put holes in it using the glue gun, but I think I want to do this one outside. In this case I'll use the heat from the glue gun's nozzle to melt through the foam. It actually gives me some pretty nice holes here.
Here's the finished disc, all ready to go. Let's give this a try. Another way to make your own pattern is to figure out the number of holes you want and then use a pie chart to determine where the holes go. There are programs that are available that will help you do this. This CD is going to have three concentric circles with 18 holes on the outermost level. I'm going to adjust the compass to where I want that outermost level on the CD and then I'll transfer that distance to the graph where the circle and lines intersect, that's where I want the holes. I'll then align the CD on the back of the paper with the hole in the center matching up to the center of the graph. I'll use some tape to hold it in place. And now it's a matter of drilling the holes out using a drill bit. I'll repeat that same procedure for the next circle. This time it's going to be 15 holes. I'll repeat that process once more, this time for 12 holes. That's going to be the innermost circle. With all the holes drilled, I'll now attach a small block of wood that's going to hold the CD to the motor. All right, now let's give this one a try. There we go. Now it is also possible to make one out of cardboard for example, these holes were drilled with a drill bit. We can also try using a hole punch, but that will limit the rows to the outside of the disc. Start by adding one hole where I want each concentric circle to be. I'll put the cardboard underneath the paper pattern. I'll then use the sharp point of the compass to push down through the pattern and mark where I want each hole to be. The next step is to use the hole punch to knock out each hole. Now here's one we just made out of cardboard. Let's give this one a try. That actually works pretty good. Well, I hope you found this video helpful if this is an experiment you want to try for yourself. Now, I am in the process of building a better base, and there's some more complex wheels that I want to try. I hope to eventually try something like this wheel. I'm also experimenting with another historical demonstration in sound, something called Savart's Wheel. I hope you stay tuned for this and other demonstrations that I have coming up in the future. As always, I want to thank you for watching. Okay, bye!